Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. This episode, we're going to talk about a film, not a work of alternate history, but kind of sort of falls into the history in general category. Uh, it, it sometimes verges on alternate history. <laughs> that's true. That's true. We'll <laughs> we'll get into exactly how later, but we're going to be talking about a film that came out in 2019 called The Great War. And there was a lot of World War One movies that came out around that time, kind of in celebration of the centenary of the end of the war. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, They Shall Not Grow Old. Have you yes. seen that film? I have not, but I've heard great things. Well, it's more of a documentary, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's. It's. Uh, but it's excellently, excellently done. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 1917. Which I also haven't seen, which I can't <laughs> believe, but it looks to me. I've actually seen like about five minutes of it, and it was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. The production values on it are insane. That's right. Passchendaele. Uh, Passion, we, yeah. <laughs> that one's okay, I guess. Uh, I watched a, a bit of it while, um, while editing the previous episode, and uh, it's okay. <laughs> It's yeah. Okay. This movie it's is Canadian. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest flaw. It's, <laughs> it's just full of Canadians. Uh, um, there's a there's a Quebecois guy who says Tabernacle in uh, Passchendaele. And yeah. I'm like, I learned I learned about this from Turtle Dove from um, uh, what's his name uh, Lucien Galtier. Yeah, the guy who talks is worse. Yeah, and he drinks Applejack and yeah, he loves having sex. Yeah, what a what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. That's that's uh, the in Quebec that's like all their curses are like religiously based. Yeah, yeah. The tabernacle is tabernac and uh other stuff. Traditional French, continental French, like all their curse words are like our curse words, you mm -hmm. know, it's like impolite things to say. Whereas in Quebec in Quebec it's like what you said, mm -hmm. bla blasphemous stuff. Um but yeah, yeah. So 1917 is like top tier like ooh great stuff yeah. and then you start going lower you know to the middle of the road you get like wonder woman you know these movies that are like not very good the, and the lost battalion tv movie which is actually pretty good from the early 2000s does that have Kiefer sutherland in it no it has um rick schroeder i don't know him who is that he was a, he was big in the 80s he was like a, a child star hmm. it had some other people who seemed familiar hmm. but it was actually pretty good okay okay but we're starting to get lower, lower mm -hmm. on the uh, the tier list here. Yeah. And you get to pretty low down, and you get this movie, The Great War, <laughs> is the name of it. As we said, made back in 2019, and it appears to be, to have been made on a shoestring budget. That's true. Yeah, like you look at the cover of the thing. Like if you were at a red box or whatever, and you saw this movie, you'd think that it was a real movie. Well, it is a real movie. It's just yeah. It's just like it's a B movie. You know, this is like this looks. This may be lower than a B movie. <laughs> well, this is it's interesting, and maybe this is the sort of movie that can only be made these days after computers, because it, it probably would have fallen into like a C tier of movies if pre anim digital animation and stuff like that. But they have just enough here to like kind of bridge the gap, and it's not like a complete amateur. Mm -hmm. effort but mm -hmm. this is not a big hollywood production if you look in the credits they they use a red camera which is a pretty common camera for like quote-unquote real movies their uniforms look nice yeah. there's well party city ran out of world war one uniforms just kidding they actually are pretty good uniforms <laughs> yeah uh, uh, the guns the guns someone has a show show yes yes there's um there's infields. They have American. I don't. I don't know if they're technically the American infields. Yeah, they are. They've got some of those. Some of them have Springfields. It's kind of a mix. There's a guy with a shotgun. There's a BAR shows up at the end. At the very end. Yeah. The German Mausers are the correct Mauser. The 1898 version Mauser for World War One, not the hmm. KR 98. Interesting. From World War Two. Okay. Which makes me wonder if like maybe they went to like a historical society or like a World War One reenacting group and got it because the equipment actually does seem pretty realistic. You know, in the credits of the film, they thank like, what is it, the Minnesota Military Museum or something like that? Maybe they got it from there. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Um, Although not everything, especially when the German machine guns fire, not exactly realistic. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a part at the very beginning, and I, I think there's this same prop probably shows up multiple times throughout the film, but the Germans have like their uh, their copy of the maxim I, mm -hmm. I forget exactly the mgo8 or whatever it's yeah. called and like the guy's firing it but it's clearly just like 
it's not firing blanks or anything. They're just adding digital mu- muzzle flash. So he's like rocking it back and forth to simulate <laughs> recoil. Yeah, but too bad that the bullets don't ever move. Like the the, the belt of ammunition just stays the same. <laughs> yeah, it's not hmm, a little conspicuous there. And also, um, there's no stand for the weapon, which is you know why it's rocking around like crazy. You know, like oh God it seems kind of silly. But yeah, this is uh, this is like the most shoestring version of a World War One movie I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like the TV movie you discussed probably looks better than it does. this one. Mm-hmm. And uh, but we're talking around kind of the plot of mm-hmm. this film. And and basically the plot is is that this movie is saving Private Ryan. Just <laughs> it is it is pretty much just saving Private Ryan exactly. So, so you have troops from the seventy seventh Division. Mm-hmm. It's November of nineteen eighteen, like mm-hmm. a few days before the war ends, and There's an attack at the beginning, and it's kind of goofy. It looks like when they get hit, like they have ketchup on them and stuff like that. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um, (laughs) There's some part where, like, there's a bunch of hands, which are just neatly arranged in order. (laughs) Just severed hands for some reason. Um, This, This movie's rated R, which I was shocked by. It does there's not, nothing that merits an R rating in maybe, this movie. Well, there's some cursing. There's some bad words that are said in the movie. But, but other than that, I mean... Yeah, the, all the, the seven-year-olds who are going to watch this movie. I mean, just like digital squibs of blood. But like, you know, it's not really gruesome. It's fine. So what happens is there's an attack at the beginning and there's a, a unit of black soldiers and apparently they get lost behind enemy lines. So they have to send Tom Hanks, I mean Bates Wilder, to, uh, <laughs> to, go, to go rescue them. So actually, we're even dancing around what's even the best part of this movie, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is so that's the, the basic outline. And this squad of troops has to go and rescue them and whatever. But this movie features a one two punch. Yes. Billy Zane, Ron Perlman. That is what was bringing the audience in for this. That's what that's what brought us to see this. Yeah, it is. Because <laughs> I was I was looking at Wikipedia uh, reading about Pershing, and I got to the bottom of the page, and it's like Ron Perlman played Pershing in the 2019 movie The Great War, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I got it. I gotta look into this. And then I saw IMDb, where it's got like three stars or whatever. It's like, hmm. I, I'm, I'm very. My curiosity is piqued by this. <laughs> And boy, did it deliver. Holy crap. Oh, man, it does. Oh, my goodness. And, and this movie, I think, was filmed in Minnesota. Okay, yeah. So I think that's most right. of it, except the portions with Billy Zane and Ron Perlman. <laughs> because it's like, oh, General Pershing's headquarters, France. And they're walking by, and there's a cactus outside <laughs> the building they're in. Hmm. Not not usually native <laughs> to eastern France, cactuses, but okay. <laughs> it's almost like this may have been shot in California or something. What? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this was on site. Yeah. I, and I got to say, Ron Perlman looks nothing like Pershing. Absolutely doesn't. nothing like him. Um, he doesn't act like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Perlman's so dour in this movie. He does, yeah. like, almost no emotion. There's a scene that is a complete ripoff of Saving Private Ryan where he reads some letter from Abraham Lincoln. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's just taking forever. He's, like, probably actually reading it for the first time <laughs> on that piece of paper. <laughs> It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's yeah, it's such a. I mean, it almost at times is almost like a shot for shot rip off of Saving Private Ryan. There's a part with the grenades where it's like throw them now. Yeah. Oh my god. Thing. I half expect them to be like Bangalore torpedoes, you know. And... <laughs> the sniper stuff at the end where he gets yeah. shot through the scope, though it doesn't yeah. look as good as Saving Private Ryan, of course. Yeah, because the guy who directs this isn't exactly Steven Spielberg. No. But uh, Billy Zane shows up as this unnamed colonel who just is an exposition tool for Ron Perlman. I feel like they shot their scenes in a day because it feels like they took whatever the first take was and they're like, this is great. We got you for the next 30 minutes, so let's get the rest of this finished Mm -hmm. up. Uh, I I was shocked. Billy Zane has billing above Ron Perlman in this movie. It's crazy. What? Yeah, he appears first in the credits. It's nuts. That that does just not seem right, it's, Max. It's completely unfair. I mean, have you seen this man's work? He's incredible. You know, Alien Resurrection. Hellboy 2. Hellboy 2. Um, you can tell them the cool story about that time Wesley Snipes cut him in half like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> in Blade 2. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, Enemy at the Gates where he gets shot in the face in that movie. He does, yeah. yeah. Um, he's great. Yeah, he's great. Pacific yeah. Rim gets eaten by a monster. Yeah, but he but he survives. 
He does survive. Yeah, he does not. He's not on cinemorg.com for that movie. That's right. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that website. It's a useful website, you know. Um, unfortunately, there's no IMFDB page for The Great War, this movie. They could have, they would have been a good one for it because yeah. they're actually, their guns are actually pretty accurate yeah. other than the whole not shooting part. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but yeah, so generally, generally this, this unit, this has to go behind the lines to find this black unit. And of course there's a black soldier from that unit who yeah. has to go with them. And then there's like, you know, people are racist against him, but not the <laughs> captain. And then, yeah, the captain's like, he's kind of in the middle and he learns the value of these men as soldiers by the end of the film. At the beginning, he's kind of doubtful. He's like, mm-hmm. uh, are these guys really effective? Are these Buffalo Soldier guys really up to mustard? Up to muster, I should up say. Up to mustard. Up to mustard. <laughs> up to Heinz. Um, um, there, yeah, there's. you mentioned racism. There's a character in this movie that's ridiculous. He's like an American commanding officer, and he's like, you should leave those men to die on that hill. Yeah, they have no right being Yeah, here. exactly. It was like, this makes like, overly gratuitous, not believable. Like, regardless of your personal feelings, you're part of the, the American military. You're not rooting for the Germans. He's like rooting for the <laughs> Germans to win. Yeah, yeah, like, you should be, like, court-martialed for saying something like that. I mean, you know, that's willful, like, Tre- sabotage. Yeah, treason against the state of Nebraska. <laughs> It's, exactly yes <laughs> um <laughs> there's oh, goodness gracious they do i mean it's interesting they do get some stuff historically right very little but pershing talks about how he commanded the 10th cavalry mm-hmm. at san juan hill yeah yeah he's like i owe these black soldiers because i've seen them perform well in the past at san juan hill it very surprising that i was i gotta give the the writer and director props for that mm-hmm uh, what was his name again? Stephen Luke. Stephen Luke, yeah. He appears to also be an actor as well. Mm-hmm. I think he appears in his own films sometimes. Yeah. He's made other stuff, I guess. Um, but it's uh, it's and funny in this, too, is, is that um, talking about the Ron Perlman, there's a scene where him and Billy Zane like walk out, and they're like looking up, and they're like watching this horribly rendered CGI like air battle <laughs> um, with World War One planes. And he's... I think he says something like, now that's real war right there. And you're watching these horribly goofy, like, (laughs) these triplanes spinning around in circles. (laughs) Which I have to take issue with because the the Fokker triplane was pretty much um, phased out of service by the middle of 1918 and certainly would not have been being used in November of 1918. Interesting. And one of them is red, Mm -hmm. kind of. The Red uh, Baron. Maybe this is in this alternate history. The Red Baron's still kicking... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah but it's just like oh god it's just the most terribly rendered cgi mm-hmm. like of all time yeah we we were having a pretty good laugh at it It reminds me of those scenes in at antietam and gods and generals with like the unfinished like soldiers and oh stuff. with the the cannons <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh so bad but um these so this unit goes to find these black soldiers who are holding a hill and as they're going there, they have like, you know, in Saving Power Iron, there's the scene where all the soldiers are walking and talking and all that. They have an imitation of that scene. And that's, that scene uh, looks normal until you notice that they're not actually walking forward. They're just kind of shuffling in place. <laughs> like they're m- moving maybe two or three inches forward every like 10 seconds or whatever. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> You know, they're like giving exposition and talking about like, oh, my family's from here, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, war movie cliche here, war movie cliche there. They teleport around, so they're like way behind everyone, and then they're right next to the captain, and it's, it just looks ridiculous. Yeah, And also, it's funny, too, that in, in like when Billy Zane and Ron Perlman are talking, he's like, why are the French continuing to attack? And Billy Zane's like, well, because any territory they control at the end of the war, they keep in the peace. And then it's like, this is supposed to happen in the the Meuse Argonne in 1918, which newsflash was in France. There was very little fighting in Germany itself in World War One, and that was certainly not part of the armistice. This finders keepers that offended me, Max. I was very offended. That's like the French saying, "We get to keep more of our own country." It's insane. Like like they'd give away parts of France to the Germans just because, like like at the end of World War II. I'm sorry, Dunkirk. It belongs to Germany now. Yeah, finders that's, keepers. You know that's right. The Germans are holding on to it at the end. America and France and Britain are going to con- control this big chunk of Germany, but Germany still got Dunkirk and they still got uh, Saint Nazaire. <laughs> the Nazis are still going strong right there. Um, it's just it, absurd. It makes no sense. Yeah, like it, I I I understand that they need to have like 
wait and give a reason why the Germans are aggressively attacking this hill. But yeah. like, I it's don't It's also know. one freaking hill. Yeah. Why would they be so... There's like 10 guys too when they get there. There's like almost nobody there. Yeah. I... And this, so they join this squad of troops around the hill and they, the Germans attack them and... It's if you look at the German soldiers at the beginning and at the end, they're the same people, which my guess is they like went to like either some local reenactor group or more likely their friends in town and were like, Hey, you want to be in a movie this weekend? <laughs> you put on this German uniform and they hold this gun and pretend to shoot. I'm I'm trying to remember. I think in the credits some of the extras had the same last names as some of the main cast members. So yeah, I think some there was some family uh I mean, why not? It saves on costs where you're like, Hey cousin, like come on, you know, come what on. What up, cuz? Cuz, come on. Hey bro. Pick some guy off the street. Hey, you want to be in a movie? <laughs> oh, man. This is and the, the next Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, it's going to be huge. It's going to be big. Ron Perlman's in it. Billy Zane Zane's is in, in it. it. Yeah. You've, you've, you can hear all these great stories about Hellboy 2. <laughs> <laughs> and and the battle itself is so goofy looking. Like, yeah. like two groups of people will just start running at each other in an open field they're not taking cover and then they'll just start gingerly like clubbing each other with their weapons it's like it's like, it's yeah. sort of starts like a, a deadliest warrior but mm-hmm. devolves into less entertaining yeah yeah and it just looks so silly and there's there's a lot of cliches in that final battle there's a guy who like gets shot and he sacrifices himself yeah. he pulls a grenade and and blows himself up on a pile of ammunition. Yeah, yeah. Looks sort like, of like the guy in Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um what's that? Miles? Miles Dyson. Miles right? Dyson. Yeah. Yeah. Very reminiscent of that. Yeah. And uh there's like a crappy little sniper duel too that looks yeah. ridiculous. Like the sniper who's just standing out in the open. Yeah, the sniper is just standing in the open. Oh my god. <laughs> um and then at the end, like the Germans are about to overrun the hill, and then the 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 lead American character is like bayonets, yes. and then it tur- the movie turns into Gettysburg <laughs> on Little Round Top. Oh my god, it's absolutely shameless. And then there's one character who's just flying an American flag at the end, just like oh, that that's the uh, that's the poster of the not the poster, but that's the cover of the Blu-ray right there. Yeah. Which, by the way, I looked up how much money they made from Blu-ray sales. Would you care to guess? $10 million? Uh, $9,000. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only in their dreams. $9,000? $9,000. It's probably not enough to cover the cost of this film. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that that doesn't... I, be, I bet there's like red box stuff and you're talking about theatrical gross yeah i couldn't find the theatrical gro- <laughs> i guess is there wasn't a theatrical yeah, gross. most likely i think this was no this was not filmed during this COVID. is pre-covid yeah yeah but they made some other movie during covid i think did they huh. yeah i think on imdb it was like a nice nice work for actors during covid or something like that um <laughs> ron perlman needs your help <laughs> no billy zane needs your help that's right Billy Zane's in another one of these crappy movies. Uh, I think about the Battle of the Bulge or something. Ah. Hmm. He can tell him all what it was like to be on the Titanic. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> tell him all about being the Phantom. That's right. That yeah. movie is interesting. I, I saw it when I was a kid. I remember almost nothing from it. The only thing I remember is like the microscope with the knives inside of it. Yeah. There's like a guy looking through it and he turns the knob and then shoop, right into his face. And uh, that, this is so stupid, but you know, you see stuff when you're a little kid that made me afraid to use microscopes because right. it might be one of those ones, you know, in the documentary, <laughs> The Phantom. Yeah, The Phantom, yeah. <laughs> Knives yeah. stab me in the eye. Um, that movie has James Remar in it. James Remar. And also Treat Williams. Oh, snap. James Remar. That's uh, you t- uh, Raiden, right? Yeah, Raiden in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> The best one, yeah. The best one. I didn't even see the new one. <laughs> I, I'm curious about that. I think some people said that it was kind of good ish. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, if it doesn't have um, the guy who is Shang Tsung in the first one, then it's not worth watching. Kerry Hiroyuki he, Tagawa? Yeah, the guy from. Uh, from uh, Man in the High Man Castle. Man in the High Castle, my God. Mr. Togomi. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Your soul is by. <laughs> Goro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like punch him in the testicles yeah. yeah that's right that's the johnny cage way that's right um 
Until he gets killed at the very beginning of the second movie for no apparent reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you will die. Yeah. What, a, what a film. What a, what a yeah. Mm. Oscars for everyone. Mm-hmm. Christopher Lambert. In know? the first one. Yeah, in the first one, right? Yeah. Is it is it Christopher Lambert? Christo- I think it's Christophe Lambert. Christophe Lambert. Okay, okay. Interesting. He was also in the movie Highlander with Clancy Brown, the voice of Mr. Krabs. <laughs> yes. Well, Clancy, Brown's, <laughs> Clancy Brown is in um, Starship Troopers. He is. Star, he's in Starship Troopers. And the great thing, I'm glad you brought that up because I was mm-hmm. thinking about the other day, like I was thinking about like, what is like a, um, what's like a guilty pleasure movie that I love watching? Mm-hmm. Starship Troopers. Okay. That okay. movie is actually, I enjoy watching that movie. Um, because of the acting of, of uh, Casper, Casper Van, Van Dien. Dien. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, what I like about it is is that if you think about it, is if that movie is like a propaganda movie being made in that universe about that war, mm-hmm. it actually makes sense because it's got like all these ridiculous war movie cliches in it. Mm-hmm. And um, what I like too is, is that Michael um, Ironside mm-hmm. and Clancy Brown clearly know what sort of movie they're in. I mean, I just love there's that scene where they're in the fort fighting the the um the bugs and then michael ironside's like give them everything you've got in like the most movie cliche and then it just has this stirring <laughs> score and they're all just like shooting and killing the is just like and like just his facial expressions and the fact that he nailed it the, there's a line right when they get into the fort at the beginning towards mm-hmm. the end and with zero um sar- with zero sarcasm with complete believability looks at a guy turns to the camera and says they sucked his brains out. <laughs> um, and <laughs> put, put that on like I, the uh... that that was that was it was brilliant. And the last time I watched it, I could not stop laughing because he says it. He just delivers it in the best possible way because this guy knows exactly yeah. what sort of movie he's in, and he nails it. I loved it. <laughs> Another excellent performance of his. Total Recall. Yes. Yeah. See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> Throw your arms off the side of the thing. <laughs> he actually is great in that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, God, it's so great. See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> he's got his little motion scanner and he's shooting the rats. The and rats, stuff. Yeah. yeah. He and that other guy. Uh, ooh. And then the bad guy ooh. in that is also the bad guy in RoboCop. That's right, yeah. Bob? No, not Bob. I think it's Ronnie Cox is actually the actor. Ronnie Cox. But yeah. no, Cohagen. Cohagen. Give these people yeah. oh, Cohagen. Cohagen. That that guy's also in Star Trek. Oh, Bob, but it is it is Bob in RoboCop. I'm cashing you out. Bob. Bob you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> and then like the thing goes away. Thank you. <laughs> Let me shoot this guy repeatedly in front of this whole room full of people. And then he falls out and then his arms are claymationing and <laughs> I I've heard an explanation for that is is, is that the shot was originally different. Uh-huh. Like originally, I think the arms were supposed to be towards the camera, mm-hmm. but then they changed the orientation, and that's why it looks so strange when he's falling. <laughs> like, you know, it was supposed to be like a forced perspective kind of thing. Got it. But what are you going to do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Good stuff. Well, Clancy Brown. Yeah, Clancy Brown. He was great in that. Yeah. The best yeah. Mr. Krabs. The only Mr. Krabs. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Is that show still going on? I think it is. Interesting. Kind of like The Simpsons. It just goes on forever. Yeah. Well, there's certain shows that like a lot of people, you don't think a lot of people watch, but still get a ton of, like tons of people still watch The Simpsons. I didn't, I mean, I don't watch it actively. I know people, people do because they obviously keep on making seasons of it. I mean, shoot. There's like shows like, um, I I think like Grey's Anatomy might still be going on. Like it is. Those kinds of like Mm -hmm. real life drama shows that just go on forever. Yeah. How many times can this soap opera thing just, you know, this person dies and this yeah, person's yeah. in a plane crash and blah, 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 These blah, two blah. people have a relationship, but then they break up and then they get back, at, back together again and this person's cheating on that person and it just goes on forever. Yeah. Uh, in this movie, there's, uh, you said that they were in the 77th Infantry Division, mm-hmm. which has a really cool patch. It's mm-hmm. the Statue, Statue of Liberty. Desmond Doss's division from... Yes. Hacksaw Ridge. Yes, and real life. Also. And real life, yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but also, yes, that movie. Have you seen that film? I've seen a good good chunk of it. Okay, okay. It's good. I like it, yeah. yeah. It's way over the top when yeah. it comes to like the Okinawa the, stuff. Yeah, like, well, that's Mo Gibson's style. Yeah, yeah. 
subtle is not, you know, when you pick up a Mel Gibson film, you're not, this isn't, you know, August Osage County. Like this is a, you're getting a bit of a, you're getting Braveheart. You're not getting on Golden Pond, you you know. Exactly. Yeah. You're not getting this like slow burning, you know, meditation on human life. You're getting Agent Smith. That's who you're getting. (laughs) Yes. Hugo Weaving. He's, I love him in that movie. I think he plays an excellent character. Yeah. No, he does a good job. He's believable. Hmm. And Lookout Mountain is featured in that film. It is. They they climb up it and look over. I think Chattanooga is what they're looking mm-hmm. at. Um, and it's just so funny. The first part of that movie feels like a lifetime movie, which is how like you know, yeah. all gosh, all shucks, kind all of shucks. Thing. Let me meet you at the hospital, and <laughs> oh, I have to give blood, and oh, I love you, blah blah. You know, then all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, you're in Okinawa. And it's, <laughs> You know, it's become Starship Troopers. Yeah. Ah. (laughs) But I I enjoy that film. That's that's a fine film. And uh, I think um, John Smith's friend from Man in the High Castle, I think he's in that division also. The one who dies in the flashback. That's right. And yeah, yeah, he is. It is the 77th. Mm -hmm. They're at that fort in 1946. Monmouth. Fort Mon- Monmouth. Fort Monmouth, yeah. yeah Monmouth. Yeah. Monmouth. <laughs> Mothmon. <laughs> Mon Mothma. <laughs> uh, yes, that that was a good show. Yeah. I recommend watching that For All Mankind show. It's, yeah, I really need to watch it. It's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. I just can't stand to see the Russians win. Oh, no. Commies. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's the, out of protest, you know. That's right. I refuse on principle mm-hmm. to watch anything in, that involves the USSR <laughs> existing in any way. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> alternate history forever. Zarimzum forever. <laughs> Tanikin forever. Uh, Vrongel forever. That's right. Mm. Um, no, it's uh This movie was um. It was interesting. Although we did have an entertaining hour and forty minutes or whatever it was. Yeah, you know, I don't want to pile on it too too bad mm-hmm. i mean there uh, we didn't turn it off we kept watching it we didn't fast forward through any of it mm-hmm. and you know as cliche as it was i mean i don't know it's an admirable effort to try to make a zero budget movie about the first world war even if some of the the plot elements don't make any sense at all mm-hmm. you know i can't really dump on it too much no i agree i think it's um it, they made a good effort i mm-hmm. mean it's just a problem for me was it just was saving private Ryan. The yeah. trenches. <laughs> it is absolutely shameless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, down to like the sergeant, like the gruff sergeant second in command. And, mm. and there's a guy with a mustache who looks suspiciously like Barry Pepper. Oh, really? At least in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Of, um, a battlefield earth. Fan. Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. What a great film. <laughs> I remember watching that on TV and thinking, this movie is just not that good. Forrest Man Whit- animals. Man animals, yeah. That's right. John Travolta and Forrest Whitaker. One two punch. <laughs> His finest film, Forrest Whitaker. That's right. He really, really had to get into character as the alien. Right. That's right. He mm-hmm. was channeling it just like he was for Last King of Scotland. <laughs> for Ghost Dog, Way of the Samurai. Yes. Um, for Rogue One is Saul That's Guerrero. That's right, yeah. The Rebellion. I can't even... So Believe. Yes. Or whatever the hell it is he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he has this weird... He's like sucking oxygen like uh, uh, Dennis Hopper is in, uh, in Blue Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, uh, having that weird octopus monster touch touch that guy's temples or whatever. Yeah, what, what, what the hell was that? That didn't make a whole lot of sense. And they never played. I, I feel like there was probably that was probably explored more in a deleted scene, but it mm-hmm. just. I hear the production, the back scenes of that was kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Like there, there had been a script for Rogue One since like the '90s that just kept getting revised and revised until it turned into that film. Um, Ragu one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really liked Rogue One. It was the best, other than Mandalorian. It's the best thing that's come out of the Disney Star Wars era. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I haven't seen any of those CGI cartoon things. But uh, I haven't either. I probably watched some at some point. Some people say those are good. So I'm know. waiting on the Obi Wan Kenobi one. Oh my god, that'd be so great. Mm-hmm. I want, I want, I want them to like revisit all the prequel stuff 
and like where are they now kind of thing you where's know? mace windu still falling <laughs> uh... <laughs> he actually fell to the planet you know what i wouldn't be half surprised if like samuel jackson shows up because would, yeah. there, there's no reason that they because of the way they 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 could easily shoehorn it in and actually f- interesting enough they could shoehorn in a darth vader obi-wan kenobi fight okay. again because the wording of when they fight in the first one they could create it such that it Oh, he says a presence I have not felt for a very long, long time. That could be, so, yeah. yeah. Who knows? A year. <laughs> yeah, a year? I don't know. I don't know. It's space years. Yeah, you know. it's, yeah, exactly. I mean, although maybe we're overthinking this. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. it's about space wizards with laser swords fighting space Hitler. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and pew pew sounds and explosions yeah, and cool looking machines. That's like that, right. That's what it's really all about. That's what it's all about. Just looking cool. Uh, Dexter Jetster, he could show up. <laughs> that's right. You know? I think they're trying mm-hmm. to shy away from the ridiculous they, CGI. They absolutely should not shy away from Dexter Jetster. And it's like, it's like, you know, go back to the well. Sleaze Bagano, have him come back, you know? <laughs> I'm sure that guy still needs employment. The, he was in the Matrix, that guy. Yeah, yeah, the His Tasty mouse. Wheat Man. Yeah, Tasty yeah. Wheat. Oh, I think Tasty Wheat tasted like... Like chicken or tuna fish. Yeah, very philosophical. You yeah, know? that's why everything tastes... They didn't know what chicken tastes like, so they made everything taste like chicken. Which is not true. Wow, it, <laughs> that's, that's not, not true, true at all. It is not true. Uh, <laughs> Never tried beef or yeah. fish. None tastes like chicken. Uh, but, but Well, The Great War, it was... I don't know if I'd call it a great movie. No. But it was, uh, it was a movie. I wouldn't even call it a good movie, really. Yeah. But a movie, yeah, not a film, a film that I watched, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I all thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you very much. This is Matt signing off. And this is Max signing off. Have a good day.